Hello, this is Matt from tracyandmatt.co.uk and here I am with the San Francisco 2 from Orange. This handset is actually made by ZTE, also known as the ZTE Crescent. Obviously here we are, Orange branded handset. Orange, for those of you watching outside of the UK, uh, Orange are actually a UK carrier in much the same way as uh, any of the carriers in the States. This is actually a subsidised handset. So inside the box we have basically a getting started guide. Uh, covering the basics of using the, the phone itself and then a more detailed handset uh, sorry more detailed manual with uh, all the information uh, about everything to do with the handset uh, underneath we have the phone itself which we're going to come back to in just a second let's just finish going through the accessories of which there seems to be uh, well, fairly few that's the box emptied so we have the battery here, it obviously has the ZTE branding on it, and that is a 1200 milliamp hour battery. Then we have a USB style wall charger, which has a trailing lead for the standard USB connector or socket, quite unusual. And then a standard USB to micro USB sync charge cable, and then finally. A wired headset which has four pole three and a half mil jack at one end, in one line microphone with a small push button, tiny hole on the back is the actual microphone hole, and then the headphones themselves they feel really quite uh, lightweight, they're pretty small and uh, very plasticky. Um, I would be very surprised if they're any good and I would absolutely expect that if you're using this handset you'll be using it with your own headphones rather than the supplied headset. So taking a look at the San Francisco 2 itself, taking out the packet, striking at the moment uh, immediately is that it's fairly weighty. Let's pull all these bits off and take a look on the front. So on the front we have a forward-facing camera for video conferencing and that kind of stuff so you can use it with Skype. There is a loudspeaker or a speaker on the front and probably a little bit difficult to make out but just on either side or just on the side of the speaker there are a couple of sensors for ambient light and proximity. Uh, the display then is a 480 by 800 pixel display, it's a capacitive touch screen, 3.5 inch diagonal, not, uh, not a bad size and uh, fairly decent resolution considering the budget nature or the fairly entry level nature of this phone. Um, this builds upon uh, the earlier San Francisco which was massively popular on the Orange Network here in the UK. Um, the San Francisco 2 just taking the uh, sort of specification up a notch. We have, below that we have uh, a couple of physical buttons for menu, home and uh, I think that's back. Yep. There's no search button but they are actual physical buttons rather than capacitive. There's a little tiny hole there which is the microphone. Taking a look on the left hand side we have the micro USB sync charge connector just there. On the bottom, really nothing to see, there's a little cut out there for pulling the back cover off which we're going to use in a moment. Right hand side up and down volume control and on the top we have the power button and the 3.5mm headphone connector for uh, plugging in your own, own headphones or indeed the uh, supplied wireless headset. On the back we have the 5 megapixel autofocus camera and an LED flash, pretty straightforward and simple. It's the orange branded logo there and then the loudspeaker on the back. The whole thing is made of uh, this sort of piano black, very shiny, glossy um, plastic, um, which is very much fingerprint magnet. But uh, and it does feel slightly, uh, well, it just feels plastic, which indeed it is. Um, but it's okay. Design isn't uh, going to win too many awards, I don't think. But it's, uh, it's not a bad handset. Let's peel the back cover off. As you can see, the back cover is uh, pretty thin. Uh, space for the battery, so let's pop the battery in now, that way around. SIM card goes just here, and we do have a micro SD card already popped in. It's a 2 gig micro SD card there. It will support up to um, 32 gig micro SD HC memory cards, so it's not bad. Back cover then pops back on, snaps in place as you can hear it clicking back in, like so. 
and then let's just power up. Run down the rest of the specification for you and uh, now that the battery's in it does feel quite weighty and indeed 120 grams. Um, I suppose that isn't very heavy but compared to some of the other handsets that we actually have on the market at the moment that are of a similar size and specification this does feel fairly weighty. Tri-band for HSDPA and tri-band for GSM will work most places when you take it worldwide if you're on holiday or uh, indeed on business. Um, it should work in most places. 117 millimeters is the height, uh, width 58 and a half uh, millimeters. I think that's uh, 117 millimeters, not centimeters. Sorry, 117 millimeters uh, from top to bottom. Uh, 58 and a half wide and just under 11 millimeters thick. Uh, 11, uh, 10.9, so just under 11. Um, let's say 3.5 inch capacitive touchscreen display, 480 by 800 pixels. It's straightforward uh, TFT capacitive screen. 512 meg of RAM. Don't have a listed amount of ROM on the specification I've been provided with, um, but the micro SD, as I say, is, is uh, there on the back. We supplied is a 2 gig. Uh, wi Fi supports 802.11b and G standard, no N standard available here, and also Wi Fi hotspot mode. Um, we also have the micro USB uh, is uh, USB 2.0 compliant. Uh, Bluetooth 2 they do DP support, the Android operating system is 2.3 gingerbread. There's an overlay with an uh, orange overlay. Uh, to the operating system which we're going to take a look in just a moment. The 5 megapixel autofocus camera does support geotagging but uh, not HD video recording and finally we have an 800 megahertz uh, CPU. Not the fastest but um, that's probably not that shameful either so let's just take a look anyhow. So we unlock and we have the welcome to orange. Uh, we'll just get started and set everything automatically. We'll get through this as quickly as possible so we can have a little demo. Skip looking at the keyboard, skip setting up email accounts for now, and we'll connect to the orange and Wi Fi. Skip and finish. So there we go. We start up in a moment. So we have, I mean, it's, it is, uh, there, there is an orange overlay and obviously an. Uh, you know, orange colouring to this, but it still is very much a familiar Android interface with the uh, time and uh, information about widgets, internet calendar, and Android Market, and email there. And on all of the screens, you've got uh, the application menu, so all of the apps that are installed. Uh, you've got messaging, so that would be text messages and so forth. You've got your phone dialer, which looks very much like any standard Android interface for the phone dialer where we have the dialer, the call log, contacts, favorites and groups obviously without anything you know, synchronized, nothing displayed in here just at the moment then we have uh, contacts uh, from pushing that button you can look at the call log or the contacts and you can make it a default action if you wanted to uh, we swipe across and we can get the Google search with voice search and a little messages widget there and furthermore, we've got uh, actually a blank screen from the other way. And we've got a well, blank screen followed by one where we have the power controls for uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, synchronization. Uh, that's also sync, isn't it? Oh, two, two there. What's that one? And then the back, backlight brightness there. We'll turn it up to maximum. Uh, going back home. I don't think we have overview. Oh, we do have overview. There we go. So we have an overview of what's running on our five home screens, should we need to. And if we come back the other way and find a blank area, do a long press, we have a series of widgets, including some orange widgets that are specific to the handset, orange shortcuts, standard Android widgets, and standard Android shortcuts too. So we can customize the display. Uh, quite a lot. If we go into the settings and wireless and networks and let's just look at the Wi-Fi settings go ahead and we'll join our Wi-Fi network here there we go and we have a QWERTY keyboard uh, not quite an Android standard QWERTY keyboard although very similar um, but nevertheless you know, it's a reasonable size so let's go ahead and do that and we'll go ahead and connect Obtain an IP address, and we are up and running, but we'll just go back, 
and we can change various display options brightness and timeout and so on We've got applications and accounts, settings and then about device and confirm the Android version 2.3.5 come back home push in this button we can see all programs as you can see there so we've got quite a few things installed um, things seem fairly straightforward I mean we've got uh, FM radio there so clearly we must have one built in gestures and games uh, maps there's two maps there one uh, orange branded see we can see sort of some uh, orange elements to some of the icons that have been customized uh, all seems fairly straightforward we've got Tetris there and weather your orange YouTube and so on if we go back to the top and uh, let's take a look at the internet and rather than going to the orange website which it's defaulting to we'll go to ours one thing I do notice about this screen um, although it's capacitive it does require um, a fairly positive press rather than being you know absolutely totally sensitive it does require a fair um, fair press on the screen and I'm struggling a little bit with the accuracy of the digitization we got there in the end so it's loading ok screen actual quality isn't bad colors look good I have obviously turned the brightness up to maximum anyway so that's loaded it's loaded uh, in sort of a hundred percent mode so we have to use two fingers to zoom out if we want to see the full page like so and we can obviously scroll around um, one thing that I noticed about this and it's probably something to do with the processor speed frankly is that uh, the scrolling isn't as smooth or as quick as on some of the other handsets we've seen recently but then again we have been looking at some very high-end um, you know, quali high quality handsets recently that are probably two and three times the cost of the San Francisco 2 so, so bear that in mind I suppose when making that judgment uh, we do have a there we go, we do have a G-sensor so we can detect where the handset's rotated to rotate the display and two finger zoom in, say so it works okay just requiring that bit much more of a positive press partly I think to do with that is the fact that there's a display um, I think it's plastic or the, the screen is plastic rather than uh, Gorilla Glass or anything like that so it just wants a little bit more of a press nevertheless it works okay go back into all programs once again uh, let's take a look at Android Market and I'll set up our account let's go and sign in I accept terms and conditions as you can see there's an indicator LED at the top there as well currently flashing away probably because I don't have a SIM card there so we have the standard Android market nothing too unusual about it so in here we have applications in different categories and then we have games by genre and then we have my apps uh, this would include anything that I've already purchased or anything requiring an update I'm going to go in and do a quick search and we're going to look for Quadrant so we could also use N22 but because we've using, been using Quadrant for a while and uh, this is just using um, gingerbread rather than anything more up to date we're going to go and download Quadrant as it's a bit more meaningful against some of the other things that we've reviewed in the past and uh, benchmarked in the past so let's do a quick run on a full benchmark which hopefully won't take too long CPU tests are running through quite nicely memory tests, IO tests so that's file system read writes and so on
2D graphics test, well that's a little slower, about 5 or 6 frames a second. This isn't too bad at uh, 17, 18 frames a second. Struggling a little. Got 60 frames a second there, that's pretty reasonable. and 14 frames a second there as well, again pretty reasonable. Do bear in mind the cost of this handset though. It is a uh, fairly entry level, inexpensive handset from Orange. There we go. Benchmarking at 977, somewhere above uh, the Galaxy S and a little bit below the most Droid X. Running a benchmark again probably would yield different results anyway. But as I say, do bear in mind the cost of the handset when judging the performance here. One final thing we just take a look at, for anybody that uh, wants to look at altering the wallpaper, you absolutely can do that. If you don't like the orange theming or whatever, you can change that to some of the other live wallpapers. Did use your own. So that's a very quick look at the San, uh, San Francisco 2 from Orange, otherwise known as the ZTE Crescent. We'll have a full review for you over the next couple of weeks. In the meantime, if you want to follow us on Twitter, it's twitter.com slash tracyandmatt, or indeed facebook.com slash tracyandmatt.co.uk. If you want to ask any questions about this, or any other handsets that we're looking at, or indeed anything uh, mobile related, please do so. We'll uh, do our best to answer you. Uh, I'll be back soon with some more videos and reviews on tracyandmatt.co.uk. But for now, thanks for watching.